Welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are brewing an extra special bitter or an ESB. The ESB has a wonderful balance between a bready, biscuity malt profile and an earthy floral hop profile. Let's get started. The water profile for the ESB is 50 parts per million of calcium, 15 parts per million of sodium, 110 parts per million of sulfate, and 50 parts per million of chloride. To do that, I'll be adding calcium chloride, gypsum, and epsom salt to both the mash water and the sparge water to get a consistent water profile throughout the entire process. Um, right now I have the hot liquor tank heating up and filling up to the right volume and temperature for me to mash in. Uh, so while that's filling up, let's go over the grains that we're gonna be using. The grain bill for the ESB isn't too crazy. Uh, we use Maris Otter as our base at a rate of around 80 to 85% of the entire grain bill. That will build up a rich malty and nutty base to that, we add a medium crystal malt, around 80 level bond at a rate of about 10%, and that will build up the toffee and caramel flavors, and add a touch of sweetness that will help with the bitterness that we add later on. Uh, and finally, we add around five to 8% of victory malt to again, bump up that toasty, nutty flavor. And as always, make sure you have the right crush composition after running your grains through the mill. You want these starches to be exposed but at the same time, you still want some of that husk in there to provide grain bed stability. Uh, if your husk gets ground up too small, you can add some rice hulls. The outer husk will do the same thing that the grain husk does and provide enhanced stability for your grain bed. We have our normal mashing setup, pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun through our false bottom, pushing it through our wort pump, through the Herms coil to maintain our mashing temperature, and then we are continuously recirculating to set up our grain bed filter. We mash the ESB at about 153 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. That will give us a nice mix of alpha and beta amylase to get a nice fermentable sugar profile. Once that 60 minutes is up, we are gonna raise that mash temperature up to 168 degrees Fahrenheit for mash out. Our 60 minute timer is up, so now we are mashing out. With the same setup, we are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun through our false bottom, pushing it through our wort pump, through the Herms coil, but now the hot liquor tank is heating up to about 176 degrees, which through recirculation, will heat this mash up to about 168 degrees over the course of 15 minutes. Once we finish with mash out, we will begin to sparge. We just finished mashing out, so now we are sparging, pulling wort from the bottom of the mash tun through the false bottom, pushing it through our wort pump, but now the lever is switched to direct the wort towards the boil kettle, which is heating up as it fills up to reduce the time it takes to get to a boil. At the same time, we are pulling our sparge water from the hot liquor tank, pushing it through our water pump, and rinsing the residual sugars left in the grains. While the boil kettle is heating up, let's go over the hops that we're going to be using. You can use any style of uh, English hot that you would like. I like to use Fuggles and East Kent Goldings. At the 60 minute mark, I add around 15 to 18 IBUs worth of Fuggle. At 30 minutes, I add around 13 to 15 IBUs worth of East Kent Goldings. And then at five minutes, I add three to five IBUs of East Kent Goldings. This will give a nice earthy flavor with a firm bitterness. Uh, even though it is an extra special bitter, it's not bitter in the same sense that the American IPAs are bitter. It's just more of a firm bitterness that will counteract some of the malt sweetness. We just finished boiling, so now we are whirlpooling, pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the tangential input, which will create a vortex inside of the boil kettle, pulling all of the hops and proteins to the center so we do not push them over during knockout. We will whirlpool for 10 minutes, and then we will turn that pump off and let it wind down for 10 more minutes. We just finished the whirlpool, so now we are knocking out, pulling wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the heat exchanger. It is going through at right around 60 degrees so I can speed the pump up. We're also oxygenating right there. And then going all the way down here, we are filling up that fermenter. We ferment our ESB with the English ale yeast from White Labs. You want a strain that has good flocculation, good attenuation, and will promote those malt and hop characteristics. Uh, we ferment ours at 67 degrees for about a week or until we're about four specific gravity points away from terminal gravity. We will then raise it up to 72 degrees Fahrenheit with a diacetyl rest, hold it there for at least 24 hours, cold crash it to 33 degrees, hold that there for at least 24 hours, uh, push it to the bright tank, carbonate it to 2.6, 2.7 volumes, keg it, and then enjoy. 
Right, this is what we've got. It is a beautiful amber color with a slightly off-white head for the smell. I get the earthiness from those English hops with a little bit of caramel and toffee, a little touch of sweetness in there. It's a very nice balance. It's got a nice firm bitterness, but it's balanced nicely by that sweetness from the, uh, the crystal malts. But that bitterness is just enough that it's not overwhelming. It is absolutely delicious. For over the age of 21, we do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. <sighs> Cheers. If you would like to see more brewing content like this, make sure you click that subscribe button right below. Uh, and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments. Cheers.